It's still March. Madness in Dallas. Down goes Duke at the hands of their ACC rival and tournament darlings, NC State. DJ Burns on the ones and twos goes for 29 points on 13 of 19. NC State was down by six at the break. They outscored Duke 55 to 37 in the second half. Duke was a putrid five of 20 from beyond the arc. It is the first time the Blue Devils had lost by double digits all season long. And NC State earning a spot in the Final Four for the first time since 1983 when they won the whole thing as a six seed under Jimmy V. They're an 11 seed now tied for the worst seed to make the Final Four since seeding began in 1979. And you're wondering, well, who, who's the worst seed to ever win it? Well, that's an easy one. It's the eight seed, Villanova, 1985. So NC State has a chance to make more history in Phoenix. They win their ninth game in a row. Stay hot, kids. CBS Sports HQ is presented by Belfour Restoring More Than Property. Gary Parrish here in studio. What the heck just happened? NC State's in the Final Four? NC State in the Final Four is almost like the secondary what just happened thing because that second half is not anything any of us could have saw coming. I mean, Duke is a top 15 defensive team in America, and they just let NC State score 55 points on them in the final 20 minutes. Duke couldn't score in that second half. They couldn't stop NC State from scoring in that second half, and it really ripped away the drama from the final six, seven, eight minutes of the game. NC State controlled it down the stretch, and just a fabulous story. The idea that this program entered the ACC tournament on a four-game losing streak after finishing below 500 in the ACC, and now they're on a nine-game winning streak headed to the final four with victories over North Carolina, Texas Tech, Marquette, Virginia, Syracuse, Louisville, Oakland, and of course Duke twice. Just an amazing story. Nine. Uh, this is, I mean, this is absolutely bonkers that they have won nine in a row. Five wins in five days at the ACC tournament. And now we're talking about something that has been done before that they have a chance. The only team to win five games in five days and then win the whole thing was UConn in 2011 with Kemba Walker. I mean, that was incredible, that run. And now the Wolfpack on a similar run. And guess who's on the other side of the bracket? Oh, UConn, the number overall seed. I mean, there are storylines of plenty here for this NC State Wolfpack. Like DJ Burns and DJ Horn, and DJ Burns is the tournament darling. I mean, everything he touches turns to gold. He has two vending machines that he runs. <laughs> it's so wild. As you know, we do the Ion College Basketball Podcast 12 months a year, multiple times a week during the offseason, at least three times a week during the regular season. And every day there are games during the NCAA tournament. I'm not exaggerating when I tell you, I don't think we said DJ Burns' name on the podcast one time the entire regular I season. I don't believe we talked about NC State positively or negatively even one time the entire season. And that is something that this sport can give us that other sports don't or in some cases quite literally can't. Like in the college football playoff, like NC State can't even sniff that. Right. Right. In the NBA playoffs, NFL playoffs, a team like NC State has no chance to be involved. But because of the nature of this tournament and automatic bids that can be earned through conference tournaments, every once in a while you'll get something like this. And every time you do, it's a really remarkable story. Everybody that we see on that court today playing, all the folks we see in the stands celebrating, they've been waiting a long time for something like this. And for NC State to get to the Final Four anytime, for the first time since 83, massive story no matter what, but to do it against Duke, your big brother, if you are indeed the little brother, you can't write it better than this. I try to be the gatekeeper of the word unbelievable because we throw that word a lot around in sports. That's unbelievable. Oh, I can't believe he threw a no-hitter. No, I can believe that. I can believe... I, this is kind of unbelievable to me to win nine games in a row, beat Duke, get to the Final Four the way they have done it. I mean, they needed a Michael O'Connell three yeah. at the buzzer to go to overtime against Virginia. And, and here they are in the Final Four. And maybe to save their coach's job. Yes. Like, let's not forget about that. And that's the other side of this is that, you know, I do a hot seat list for CBSSports.com every year. And... <laughs> in multiple years, Kevin Keats has been on it. Deservedly so. I don't think it's a secret in the industry that if this season would have 
gone even more poorly and perhaps just if this season would have gone uh, differently like they just lose at any point in the ACC tournament there's a chance he's not even the coach at NC State like right now in this moment it's incredible and in this moment not only is he still the coach at NC State we're watching him celebrate on the court after advancing to the Final Four. It really is, like you put it, unbelievable. I mean, they win the ACC tournament. That triggered the contract extension. Yes. I mean, so, like, again, we talked about this at halftime, the fact that desperation breeds success. You are playing for your life. You are playing for your job. These kids are playing for this moment, and it sort of inspires a team like this that nobody is, is, is there. everybody's counting them out. I mean, in fact, they were a 1,000 to 1 to win the NCAA tournament. They, and they still, look, they, they got to still win two more games. And is that feasible? Sure. Is it probable? I don't know. It's I mean, unlikely. They're going to face Purdue and then the winner of UConn and Alabama. Just to get here is an incredible accomplishment because you consider what how the thing, they lost 10 of their final 14 regular season games. They entered the ACC tournament on a four-game losing streak, Gary. No, this would be, it's a little bit apples to oranges, but you'll get the point, I think. Like, if we somehow just decided to throw the San Antonio Spurs into the NBA playoffs, and then they were in the Western Conference Finals. You'd be like, Whoa, how did this happen? Bonkers. They've, they've been, we've been watching this team play all season. They've been terrible all season, you know, relative to conference affiliation and all that. You know, this was not a good basketball team. It's not like they were good in November and then they fell off, or they were um, really bad in November, but then they got good. They were just bad, you know, below average November, December, January, February, March, up until the ACC tournament, and now they are the story of the NCAA tournament. They catch fire. Nine straight wins. They down Duke. Again, they were down by six at halftime. They outscored Duke 55 to 37 in the second half, and consider that Duke only gave up 51 to Houston in their previous game. What the heck happened to Duke in this game? DJ Burns would be the most obvious thing. I mean, he was terrific, but even like as he is becoming a household name and the face of this NCAA tournament and perhaps the body of this NCAA tournament, um, this is still way out of character for him. It's not like we're talking about, well, you know, Zach Eady's been an All-American all season or Don Connect's been an All-American all season. Like, DJ Burns is just a guy. He was just a guy who plays for NC State. Nothing more, nothing less. And now he is in many ways like the face of this. My mother is at home watching these basketball games like the rest of us, and she's texted me at least seven times about DJ Burns today oh, in the middle of the game. And so she's caught up in it. The whole country's caught up in it, and it, it, it really is a remarkable story. But I do think you touch on something important here. As happy as the country outside of Duke fans can be for NC State, this is an incredible missed opportunity. Huge missed opportunity. Duke. John Shire is very young. I think he's got a long career ahead of him and a long career at Duke ahead of him. I don't think he'll ever have a more favorable path to the Final Four than he had with this team. You know, it's Vermont. Yep. James Madison. Mm -hmm. Houston without its best player for the entire second half. Yep. And then an 11 seed that you had already beaten. It will never get easier than that. And obviously it wasn't easy enough because they really just fell apart in the second half. Cal Filipowski, basically a no-show. He was 3 of 12 from the field before uh, fouling out. And then Tyrese Proctor, who has been among the most disappointing players in the country this entire season. Just uh, another horrific effort from him. 0 of 9 from the field. 0 of 5 from three-point range. Obviously, Jared McCain was very good, but he can't beat even a double-digit seed by himself. Once we got to that second half and Filipowski couldn't flip a switch, Proctor never got going, and NC State really got into a rhythm. Um, it was a big, big hill to climb for Duke, and they could not climb it. They played their worst game of the season. Yes, at the worst at time. At the worst time. I mean, they lost by double digits for the first time this season, and it comes at the worst possible time against your rival. They had never met in the NCAA tournament. Meeting for the 257th time, first time in the tournament, and you can't beat them in the tournament? And, sh and sh uh, shouts to NC State, but Duke is the team that's supposed to get to the Final Four. NC State, th this, is a, this is a prayer. This is a miracle that they get to the Final Four. Duke is the team that's supposed to be there, and they don't take care of business in this spot. Was it, do you think, a little bit of both of, of maybe the inexperience and the coaching in John Shire, but he's been here before as a player, or was it just... What, what was it really that, that hampered Duke? Was it the shooting woes? Was it poor game plan? What was it? I, I won't go so far as poor game planning, um, but clearly like it was just a, a perfect storm of bad stuff all at the 
the wrong time. Keep in mind, they were up six at the half. Yes. They weren't playing well, but they were up six and a half. And I actually thought that was encouraging if you're Duke. Like, we're getting nothing from Filipowski. We're getting nothing from Proctor. And we're still up six. Like, let's, we're fine. And then it just snowballed on them in the second half. And in both directions, they couldn't guard and they couldn't score. That's obviously a terrible combination. Terrible. In every, every sport, <laughs> but especially uh, basketball. So um, I just think, and this is the nature of this tournament. We saw it with Purdue last year in that first round of game against Fairleigh Dickinson. When you are so obviously supposed to win, supposed to be the better team, and then you're looking up and the score's not in your favor and the clock's ticking down, that's when nerves can start to set in. Because if this were the NBA playoffs, we're playing best of seven, it's like, well, you know, that's, that's one. They got to get us three more times. We're fine. But when you look up and you know this is it, if we don't get going, then it can get hard to get going. And they, they obviously could never find what they were looking for. The boys from Raleigh rally to the Final Four, winning their ninth straight game to get to the Final Four for the first time since they won it all in 1983. I mean, this is storybook stuff. This is movie type stuff. When Jim Valvano won the title, that's, I mean, they made a documentary about it. I mean, this is, this is becoming that right now nine straight wins standing in their way to get to the national championship Zach Eady and Purdue Purdue playing an absolute thriller against Tennessee to get here Purdue has won 48 NCAA tournament games most all time without winning a title they will play in the first national semifinal next Saturday in Phoenix coming up We'll head back out to Dallas, where the madness continues. DJ Burns, DJ Horn, sound the horn. NC State into the Final Four. We'll see you in Phoenix. Back out to Dallas after the break.